I went out and I went to a dog like war munitions in um, the Iron Creek in Parking, which is near Lodge Avenue. I was standing all day measuring egg grenades with my out like that. In the paint brain factory, they used to spray like pieces for um, aeroplanes and tanks. There was no masks or anything to protect us to. During the war, we used to have to go to the shelter a lot because of the air raids and we didn't used to get paid when you was in the shelter. So we used to get a reduced wage. You worked from half past seven to quarter to seven at night. We got three quarters of an hour for lunch. Oh, you got ten minutes in the morning, which you just managed to go to the ladies. I'd be tired if you was late. They used to say to me, will you ask Carol when she's going to get us a rise? Oh, it's not down to her. You've got to go to a union meeting, you know, and voice your opinion. But they never used to. They was always afraid that they was going to get dismissed. There wasn't a, such a thing as health and safety then, because the job they'd given me in the in the factory to do was spot welding and if I were you she said get yourself a pair of rubber gloves you don't want to be electrocuted I said well don't they give you rubber gloves well they're supposed to she said but they run out the whole machine blew up one day I was sitting there the flames were all over the place and I could hear this screaming she's gonna be burnt she's gonna be burnt anyway it all died down the sparks were coming out like sitting in the middle of a rainbow and this woman picked me up off the seat. I couldn't move because I was, well, I was shocked more than anything. And I thought, if I move, I might get burnt. And along come a couple of men and they, they, they push the machine away. You're on a coach, then you stop halfway. There'd be a, a load of other coaches there. Been to the day, Margate. About six o'clock, you've got the coach and you stop at the same place again. By this time, a lot of people were really merry. And they used to have a dance. All the factories used to have Christmas parties for their children. You all used to have to sit down like at trestles and things and you had your party food. And then they used to have to sit down and they call your name out and give you a present. I mean, when I was working at the main bakers, I used to come home at five and then start cooking and washing and ironing. Sometimes I never even sat down in the evenings. The kids used to help me, but I had to give them money all the time. <laughs> this factory was called Magnavox, and it, we went down a, a, a turning opposite the cemetery at the bottom of Barking. I had to get from the nursery up that little hill, race down the road to the factory, and I was never early. It was always one minute, two minutes, three minutes late. They used to take 15 minutes off your pay every day. And I ended up having five pounds a week. Well, the nursery was two pounds, 17 and six. One day we heard that the factory had got equal pay with the men. None of the other girls seemed worried about it, but Sheila and I were. We wanted equal pay with our men. Some husbands wouldn't like their wives doing that. Well, I'd done as I liked, so did she. <laughs> my Aunt Daisy was one of the machinists at Ford's. When the shop steward called them out on strike, my Aunt Daisy went on strike. And what I remember about it was my mother was absolutely disgusted because According to my mum, Daisy was really well paid. But my mum really didn't understand. The issue of the strike was about the fact that the women's jobs had been deemed to be unskilled when actually they were semi-skilled. Being a machinist requires more skills than it does to push a broom around a factory. 